What is up, everybody, and welcome back to the Everything Crypto Show, where we keep you up to speed on the most important news moving the crypto markets. Now, we are back today with a crucial daily market update. You guys may be able to tell that I am not in my regular recording setup with the mic. However, there is some very important information to get through in today's video that I did not want you guys to miss out on. And the big one here being that the largest crypto exchange globally, Binance, is suspending USD deposits and withdrawals. Now, given that Binance has over $74 billion worth of customer assets, this is definitely something we do need to talk about in today's video. And one other thing we are going to cover is Ethereum, as I do see a big money-making opportunity coming up as we do near staking withdrawals hitting the main net. So without further ado, it is time to sit back, relax, grab that morning cup of joe, and enjoy the show. Happy Tuesday, everyone. Make sure to hit that sub, like, and notification bell if you have not already and join the Everything Crypto squad. And with that, we're going to hop in right here with the question of the day. Now, today I want to know, do you still hold any funds on Binance after this news? Let me know in the YouTube comments down below. If you do, uh, you definitely do want to pay attention to the content in today's video. And even if you don't, you do still want to pay attention as whether or not you are a Binance customer. This could have some implications on the rest of the crypto market. Now, with that, we're going to hop right in here with the charts. And first of all, we're going to take a look at Bitcoin, which is holding up pretty well, despite pulling back recently from that $24,000 level. We are currently sitting at 22.9K, pretty much in the middle of no man's land at the moment. You guys know if you've been watching my past couple of videos, there are two key technical levels that I am looking for when it comes to Bitcoin. And uh, the more likely scenario, which I think is the upside scenario, is in fact a retest of the 200 week moving average at 24.8K. Now, it is also worth noting that we are seeing a potential convergence here between the 200 week and the 50 week with the 50 week moving average sitting at 25.2K and the 200 week moving average sitting at 24.8K. So I do believe this will act as a very strong magnet for the price action of Bitcoin. And if Bitcoin does manage to break above these key technical indicators, I do believe that $30,000 is next on the table. You guys can see here, if I do put the lines back on the chart, that 30K acted as a very strong level of support in January of 2021 before Bitcoin made its first run up here to about 64.5K. Then Bitcoin collapsed about 50% here from this level back down to just in and around $30,000 before once again hitting a new all-time high later that year in November, which did mark the uh, the top of the previous bull run. So 30K, once again, a very strong area for Bitcoin. And if we can actually break above this key area here around the $25,000 level over the 200-week and 50-week moving average, I do think that 30K is next on the table. Now, as for the downside target, which I don't think is as likely here, but it is worth mentioning, um, is actually the $20,000 level of support. And this is a very important level for two different reasons. The first one being this is the 2018 all-time high for Bitcoin. This is the first bear market that Bitcoin actually broke below a previous bull run all-time high. So when we are below 20,000, it is very negative for market sentiment. And staying above it is a positive thing for market sentiment, in my opinion. So a key technical indicator just in terms of the overall market perception of Bitcoin. And secondly, we do have the bull market support band sitting at 20.4K. So a lot of technical indicators suggesting that if Bitcoin was to make a move to the downside, this would act as a very strong level of support. Now, taking a look at Ethereum here, and you guys are going to notice a lot of similarities between the price action of Bitcoin and Ethereum. They do tend to move together for the most part, but right now there is a lot of technical indicators actually lining up the two together. So the first thing here is the fact that we're going to talk about the downside target first for Ethereum because once again, just like Bitcoin's downside target for me sits at 20K, Ethereum's downside target sits at 1400, which is also its 2018 all-time high. Now it is worth noting that the bull market support band for Ethereum sits at 1365 on the lower band and 1465 on the upper band, effectively putting 1400 dead smack in the middle of this range more or less. And then we have the 200 week moving average sitting at 1401 so a lot of technical indicators suggesting that if the crypto market was to surprise us and make a move downwards that 1400 would make for a very strong level of support now to the upside for ethereum which i do once again think is the more likely scenario if bitcoin is going to make a run past 25.2k above its 50 week moving average i think ether will also make a move above its 50 week moving average sitting at 1765 
And if Bitcoin is going to run back up to 30K, I think that $2,000 is the next logical level here for Ethereum. Now, just as 30K acted as support for Bitcoin, when we did actually see that 50% collapse in 2021, $2,000 also acted as the level of support for Ethereum here on the chart. Not to mention that $2,000 actually acted as a very key area of resistance on the pre-merge hype that we saw last year in August. You guys may remember if you've been with the channel for that long, when Ether was hitting this $2,000 level, I said that it made no sense for Ether to rally this much in the middle of a bear market, and that it was most likely going to pull back to the 200-week moving average in the mid $1,200 range. This made for a very clean shorting opportunity last Last year as ether did in fact pull back as it got rejected at the bull market support band it got rejected once again at the bull market support band here in october and november of last year and it was not until the rally began in 2023 that ether did finally break back above this level and has officially closed now three weekly candles above it well two officially and it looks like we are about to close a third weekly candle above it at the end of this week so to me 2000 <sighs> And it was not until the rally that began this year that Ethereum was able to get back above this key technical area. So I do think that Ether is headed back up to $2,000 in the coming weeks, assuming that the crypto market does continue its move to the upside, which based on all the technicals here, I do think is the much more likely scenario. It is worth noting the only thing that I am really keeping an eye on right now for potentially halting this rally, or one of the big things is actually the US dollar, which has actually found some support here at the $102 area and is now making its way back to the upside. But besides that, it does look like crypto does want to continue this rally. Now we're going to hop into the Bitcoin and Ethereum news here before we get into the Binance stuff. And the first thing to note here is that MicroStrategy is announced Enterprise Lightning Platform and Conference at its shareholder meeting. So you can see here that on uh, May 3rd, they are having Bitcoin for corporations. Keynote with Bitcoin luminaries, Bitcoin corporate treasury, products and services and outlook, as well as strategic vendors and offerings. And on May 4th, they're focusing on the Lightning Network with Lightning for corporations, which is going to be a keynote with Lightning luminaries, the Lightning ecosystem, developers, tutorial and workshop, as well as MicroStrategy Lightning. So this sounds like it could be some new platform that MicroStrategy is in fact deploying. We know that Michael Saylor, who is no longer the CEO at MicroStrategy, but very high up at the company, is in fact a very outspoken Bitcoin bull. And we did actually cover back here on the channel in late last year that MicroStrategy is looking to offer Bitcoin Lightning solutions in 2023. So MicroStrategy's Lightning Network solutions include Satoshi-powered incentives for marketing and website cybersecurity, looking to essentially explore software and solutions that utilize the Lightning Network, such as solutions that support enterprise marketing as well as cybersecurity solution aimed at corporate websites. Now, the Lightning Network, for those of you that don't know, is a layer 2 payment protocol layered on top of Bitcoin's blockchain, allowing for off-chain transactions, which do help to raise the payment throughput and lower transaction fees. A big complaint when it comes to the Bitcoin Network is the, the slowness of the blockchain, and that is what the Lightning Network layer 2 solution looks to solve. This is what does make Bitcoin a valid payment method in the eyes of a lot of Bitcoin bulls, including Michael Saylor, who is now looking to actually bring this to more corporations and enterprises. So a business intelligence and tech company known for its massive Bitcoin holdings, MicroStrategy has been looking to beef up its Lightning Network verse team, most recently announcing it was looking to hire a software engineer to build a Lightning Network based software as a service platform. So during a Twitter Spaces conversation, Saylor explained that chief marketing officers could potentially use the Lightning Network to incentivize customers, such as giving out Satoshi rewards for engaging in activities like posting good reviews or completing surveys. The company also wants to make it possible for any enterprise to spin up Lightning infrastructure in one afternoon, essentially saying that he wants all these enterprises to be able to adopt the Lightning Network into their business strategies very easily. And this is how we are going to see billions and trillions of dollars flow into Bitcoin is through this institutional adoption and integration of this blockchain into everyday businesses. Now we see that Bitcoin is becoming very popular on a company level. It is also very popular here on an institutional level as we saw from Fidelity, 
uh, a Bitcoin first article. It says why investors need to consider Bitcoin separately from other digital assets. Now, this is a very long 26 page paper that I did not admittedly take a whole look at, but they have the point form uh, bullet points here. And it does really summarize exactly why I think that there is Bitcoin and then there is the rest of the crypto market. Now, this is not coming from the perspective of a Bitcoin maxi, okay? I actually have Ethereum as my largest position with Bitcoin in close second, but I do believe that Bitcoin is sort of making its way separate from the rest of the crypto market. And the reason being here is because Bitcoin is not valued for the same reasons as the rest of these, these cryptocurrencies, right? Like Ethereum is valued here based on its DeFi as it has the most TVL at 46.76 billion. It makes up 65.3% of the DeFi space as a whole. Bitcoin comes in here in 25th place with only 139 uh, million in terms of total value locked. So clearly Bitcoin is not valued for its DeFi. Bitcoin is valued as a store of value, as a transfer of value. And uh, Fidelity basically makes the case here that Bitcoin is best understood as a monetary good. And one of the primary investment theses for Bitcoin is the store of value asset in an increasingly digital world. They say here that Bitcoin is fundamentally different from any other digital asset. No other digital asset is likely to improve upon Bitcoin as a monetary good because Bitcoin is the most secure, decentralized, sound digital money relative to other digital assets and any improvement will necessarily face trade-offs. So this is definitely a very interesting perspective coming from Fidelity, who is kind of saying that you should consider Bitcoin death, uh, just like separately from the rest of the crypto market. And I do still believe that Bitcoin is going to be the preferred crypto by these institutions alongside Ethereum, as they do have the most mainstream adoption behind them at the moment. And you can see here, to put things into perspective, how even though Bitcoin and Ethereum are the largest cryptos by market cap, they still have a lot to gain by this mainstream adoption. So for some perspective here, Fidelity has around 40 million individual investors and 9.6 trillion in assets under management, 3.6 trillion in total discretionary assets. We also know that BlackRock, the largest asset manager in the world with about 8.5 trillion in assets under management last we checked is also bullish on Bitcoin and Ethereum. And to put things into perspective, we're talking about, you know, give or take, let's say cumulatively $10 trillion plus between these two asset managers. And then we have Bitcoin coming in here with a $446 billion market cap and Ethereum with a $202 billion market cap. So even though these are the largest cryptocurrencies, they still have a lot to gain by this mainstream adoption. We are talking about cryptocurrencies valued in the billions while these asset managers, these banks have trillions of dollars of capital just waiting to flow into Bitcoin. And you know that as the demand grows for crypto, they are going to want to capitalize on this. So definitely very bullish on the institutional adoption of Bitcoin and Ether. Now hopping into the Ethereum news here, there are two main things I do want to discuss. And the first one being the deflationary record that ETH has hit since the merge went live with a negative issuance of 11.1k Ethereum in the past 145 days. This effectively means that since the merge has gone live, Ether has been net deflationary and this has definitely ramped up over the past month. So in the past one day, we have seen a negative issuance of 1,325 Ethereum. In the past seven days, we have seen 6.2, just under 6.3K Ether burned. And in the past month, we have seen 15.2K Ethereum burned. This does begin to validate the thesis we have had for Ethereum's tokenomics post merge to proof of stake. And the snowball effect kind of goes something like this. So step one is we see more buying pressure on Ethereum. This leads to more on-chain activity as people are making transactions with it, with this Ethereum paying gas fees. And as transactions go up, so does the GUI meter. When the GUI meter is pushed above the magic number of 15.5K, this means that EIP-1559 burn mechanism is burning more Ethereum than is being issued out to, to validators as staking rewards on average. This means that Ether will effectively be net deflationary, and we can see just how powerful this deflationary aspect has been since the year-to-date rally began here on January 2nd. January 2nd, we had a positive issuance of 4,915 Ether. That is now down to 11.1K Ether that has been burned since the merge has gone live. And this is in the middle of a bear market rally. Imagine what this may look like in a bull market with more buying pressure, more FOMO. I mean, you guys can begin to see why I still remain incredibly bullish on Ether and why it is the largest position in the portfolio. 
Now, we do also have one positive catalyst coming up for Ethereum, in my opinion, in the form of the Shanghai upgrade in which users will be able to withdraw their Ether that has been locked up on the Beacon chain. I believe that Ethereum deposits here for staking actually began in November of 2020. So some people have had their Ethereum at this point locked up for over two years. And you can bet that some people are going to want to go ahead and withdraw their Ethereum. Now, some people are hypothesizing that as people are be able to unstake their ETH and do whatever they want with it, including sell it, that we will in fact see more selling pressure here for Ethereum, that this will act as a sell the news event. I personally disagree and think it is quite the opposite. I think that once the Shanghai upgrade goes live, that this is likely to encourage more ETH holders to lock up their assets over the long term, as it will show people that they can go ahead and stake their Ethereum and get it back whenever they want, okay? It has been a very long time overdue for people that have had their ETH locked up here since late 2020. Some people were trying to FUD Ethereum and say that it was not going to happen, and we knew that eventually withdrawals would go live. I think that people seeing once again, just like the Ethereum Foundation executed on this merge to proof of stake, and seeing them once again execute on allowing staking withdrawals will put a lot of confidence in ethereum holders and will more likely encourage people to lock up their eth as opposed to people withdrawing their eth and selling it i know personally i will also feel a lot more comfortable staking my ethereum once withdrawals are alive and i can get it back whenever i want and i do believe that the rest of the market sentiment will sort of align with this as well it is also worth noting that even if it was to be a sell the news event of the 16.38 million ethereum deposited only 36.4 percent of stakers are in the money so to put that into concrete numbers that effectively means that of the 16.38 mil eth locked up only about 5.45 million of this ether is in fact in profit right now on their price since depositing ethereum with a total supply of 120.5 mil at the moment and obviously shrinking as we just discussed as ETH does continue on its deflationary tear that is not a significant amount of selling pressure even if every single person in the money did want to take profit on their stake ethereum and personally i do believe that even if people do take profit which i think some people will definitely take even partial profits on their ether that the amount of inflows here into the staking contracts is going to definitely outweigh the amount of ether going out and that is my investment thesis when it does come to the shanghai upgrade i do think it will act as a more positive catalyst for ether than a negative catalyst and one way that we can actually make money off of this catalyst is in fact off of these liquid staking solutions so the first one here is Lido token which has been on an absolute tear now Lido finance is the largest liquid staking solution for ethereum with over 8.2 million dollars worth of ether staked at the moment that is equivalent to just over 5 mil ethereum in total and uh so right off the bat i mean of 16.38 million ether locked up here as we just discussed Lido themselves has just under 30 percent of, of all this ethereum in their very own liquid staking solution and therefore, you can see why Lido Dow has been on an absolute tear as of late. Now, on a year-to-date basis, Lido is up from $0.95 cents to $2.60. So just under a 3x from the level it actually started the new year at. In the past seven days alone, we actually saw a pullback down to $2, now sitting up at $2.60. So over a 25% rally here from February 5th. So clearly Lido Dow is a very volatile coin as we can see based on the price action and this is one of those projects that I will be keeping my eye on especially leading up to the Shanghai upgrade which could act as a very positive catalyst for the price action and now some other liquid staking solutions here for Ethereum that we are keeping our eye on do include Rocket Pool as well as Frax here. This is a smaller liquid staking solution when actually compared to uh, to Lido Dow and Rocket Pool, but nonetheless another liquid staking solution for Ethereum, and therefore it has benefited from the positive catalyst surrounding the Shanghai upgrade. We can see here that Frax share is up from four dollars and roughly ten cents at the beginning of the year, now sitting at twelve forty four, so about a two hundred percent rally from those levels. And then similarly here, let's take a look at Rocket Pool in terms of its year-to-date performance. 
and uh, Rocket Pool here has actually gone ahead and rallied up to $41 after starting the year at about $19.81, so over doubling as well based on this catalyst. So that is one way that we are potentially looking to make some money here on the Ethereum Shanghai upgrade going live in March. And just something we did, we did blah, sorry, want to bring to your guys' attention as the Shanghai upgrade does approach. Now, we're going to wrap this up with the most important piece of news, in my opinion, and that is crypto exchange Binance suspending their USD transactions. They said that they will begin to suspend US dollar withdrawals and deposits for international customers beginning February 8th. And this comes at a time where their banking partner Signature Bank in January raised their transaction minimums for dollar transfers. So it was announced here on January 23rd that Signature Bank halts SWIFT transactions under $100,000 for crypto users. And this was according to Binance. So they said here that one of our fiat banking partners, Signature Bank, has advised it will no longer support any of its crypto exchange customers with buying and selling amounts of less than 100,000 USD. As a result, some individual users may not be able to use SWIFT bank transfers to buy or sell with, with slash for USD or amounts of less than 100,000. And for those of you that don't know, SWIFT is a messaging system that allows banks and other financial institutions from all around the world to send and receive encrypted information, namely cross-border money transfer instructions. Furthermore, all other Binance functions are unaffected by this change. All users can continue using their accounts, notably buying and selling crypto using credit or debit cards using one of other fiat currencies supported by Binance, including euros, and their Binance P2P marketplace will continue to operate as usual. So the big thing here is that it is only USD transfers that have been halted as a result of Binance's banking partner. And CNBC reports here that they did see crypto outflows here after the announcement, but but according to the news here or according to the on-chain data, they've only seen outflows of 65.81 million in the past 24 hours. And for Binance, who has over $74.8 billion worth of assets in total, that is peanuts compared to what this would actually be if this was a very negative catalyst. So we're going to go a little bit more in depth here as Binance says they are temporarily suspending USD bank transfers. Affected customers are being notified directly. Now, they say the company uh, only has actually about 0.01% of their monthly active users leveraging USD bank transfers, and they are working hard to restart that service as soon as possible. So Binance US, which is a unit of the company that is regulated by the Treasury Department's Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, said in a tweet that it is not affected by this suspension. This move only applies to non-US customers who transfer money to or from bank accounts in dollars. So additionally, it is worth noting that Binance US confirmed this transfer is not affected by the suspension, meaning that if you are a US customer, you will still be able to transfer USD into your Binance account according to that tweet. And uh, they say your data showed that Binance did see some outflows. Once again, I mean, net US dollar outflow was 172 million for the day based on DeFi Llama. And that is a tiny amount of money compared to the $74 billion in customer assets. And let me refresh here and see what it is now at present moment. And uh, yeah, we're only looking at 65.81 million in 24 hour outflows. So really not a big deal here. And we can also see that according to the BNB price action, which still sits at $328 up 4.79% on the day. Simply for international customers outside of the US, Binance is going to have to look for a new banking partner. But besides that, all other deposits, withdrawals, including crypto deposits and withdrawals mainly are still fully functional. So if you have seen any FUD about this on the internet or we're not sure about what this meant for you as a Binance customer, I do hope I do hope that this help brought you some clarity to the matter. And on that note, I hope you guys did enjoy the content in today's video. You know what to do. If you made it all the way to the end, you are an absolute champion. Let me know in the YouTube comments down below and claim that champion status. I hope you are all having an amazing Tuesday. I'm wishing you all an amazing week ahead and I hope to catch you in the next one. Peace out for now.